Oh, hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Brianna, <laughs> aka at Milky Booze. And I'm Monica, go so over here, from Monica Kim. And today we are discussing A Winter's Promise by Christelle Davos. Yes. Which is very exciting. It is. This is definitely one of the prettiest books ever. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. House and Castle vibes, I feel like. Or not House and Castle, but Castle in the Sky. That's what I meant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, do we want to start by just talking about sort of our general thoughts before we dive into like spoilers or oh, should we do a synopsis first? Oh yeah, we can do a synopsis. Um, okay. I guess quick synopsis is this book is a young adult fantasy that follows our main character Ophelia and she has the power to, when she touches an object, be able to read its history. And she has the ability to travel through mirrors, um, short distances through mirrors. And then one day she finds out that she's been betrothed to this man who lives in a foreign land. And then she's sent over there and finds herself in the middle of a lot of political intrigue, in the middle of these families fighting for power. And she's trying to find her place in the world there, far away from everything that she knows and is comfortable with. I feel like that's yeah, a pretty yeah. accurate. Yeah. It's also... Um translated from French. So I think it's a, one of the um, Europa editions, like their first like children's or YA book, which is kind of cool. Oh. Um, and it is the first book in a, I think four part series. I think the fourth and final book is coming out this year sometime. Or it's out in France, but they're waiting on it to oh. be translated. Okay. Do you want to start? Oh. <laughs> I could start uh, with my sort of general non-spoilery thoughts, which are that I felt really mixed about this book. It had for me, I think like all the things that I love, like I love books that are set in sort of like wintry environments. Um, I love sort of a brooding romantic interest. I love um, the like, how political it is. Uh, like, I love really political plots. Um, and I, you know, I thought the magic systems and the different families were all really interesting. Um, and like the world itself, like the fact that they are these arcs, I thought that was really cool. But for some reason, none of those things worked for me in this book. <laughs> um, you know, I just, for the romance, I just at no point felt it was romantic. Um, the world building like somehow just didn't captivate me or make me feel like I was, you know, sort of falling into this different world. Um, and the politics, despite being like really cutthroat, again, just like real, I really struggled to hold my attention. So yeah, I don't know. I feel <laughs> really confused about this book because it has all the things that I should love, but I didn't love it. No, I agree. And I know we like talked about it briefly before, but like for me, I was super into the magic system. Like you said, like I thought that each family essentially has their own set of power. So like the main character Ophelia's family, a lot of them have the ability to like, kind of like read objects to a different extent. Some people are better than others, but like they'll kind of have some type of ability like that or within that realm of abilities and other people have the ability to like inflict pain on other people without touching them or like things like that and I thought that was really exciting to kind of see how that manifested in like these power struggles with different yeah. people and magical powers but like I think a lot of the political intrigue hinged on caring about the characters yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did it <laughs> Like I a lot of the romance also fell flat. It just happened so suddenly. There's also very few scenes I feel like that are actually between the main character and her love interest, Thorn. There's yeah, like, I agree. Like, <laughs> there's nothing to like. I feel like make you root for them yeah. in any capacity. And like, I feel like with the brooding love interest, normally that you have those scenes where you're like, ooh, like he's brooding, but he's soft for her. 
But yeah. then the book ends up telling you that like he's not even actually soft for her. He just wants her power for himself. And then you're like, so, so he's just brooding. He's just brooding. Um oh my gosh, I love Rusty. He he was okay. no Darcy. Yes. No Darcy. Uh-uh. Uh, that's what, like, because I had heard, I also, like, part of why I was so hyped up on this book is because, a, like, a month or so ago, I, my TikTok turned into just Draco TikTok. I feel like a lot of people did. <laughs> of like, just self-insert, and, like, it has expanded from them. I've started getting Doctor Who ones, but it's just, like, all of these, like, self-insert fanfic videos that are amazing. Like, the peak of creativity. Right. But so many of, like, those creators were like, oh, you should read this. <laughs> you want, like, that sort of bad boy, like, love interest kind of thing. And I was like, where? Where? Because he also where? does Where is the love? <laughs> yeah. So it was a little, a little disappointing. <laughs> yeah. And I also, I agree with Rusty's comment. Yeah, the romantic dynamic was just awkward because she would just be like scared of him all the time and then i feel like there's a lot of emphasis on thor and being like very tall and scary and ophelia is so little and she's so tiny <laughs> and it was just that like the whole time and then i feel like you never got those feelings like heart fluttering that mm -hmm. you want some scene is like oh like the tension is there i feel like this coming together yeah. and then or even weird. like like minus the romance i just like i didn't care about anybody i didn't like ophelia i was like i guess i cared about her at the beginning but then like the longer we like went with the book i was like i just i really cared about her aunt i liked her aunt a lot. oh yes Ro rosalind rosalind Ro yeah <laughs> yes i <laughs> love the aunt and Fox, like the redheaded other valet who like sticks mm -hmm. up for Ophelia and Gail, the mechanic. I was super yeah. into their subplot stories. Like when Fox and Gail eventually share their kiss, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think that was like what I struggled with too. Is I like I just didn't I didn't care about the main character. I didn't care about. Her girl, I mean, I did like, I guess, I mean, should we just dive into full spoilers? Yeah. Yeah. All right. How do I, how do I put a, a thing? Oh, here. Oh, oh. no, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I just, I feel like um. characters I care about were all um, side characters that don't show up yeah. often enough for me to make, stay engaged. And I did like, like in the end, how she was like, I'm not going to be submissive anymore. Like, I'm, I'm going to like fight for myself. And I'm like, I really wish we had seen a bit of that earlier in the book yeah. versus like a sudden epiphany at the end. Um, because maybe I would have like been more engaged with her. That did make me interested in the second book, but I think like finding so much else within the first book uninteresting, I would be surprised if I like went through and, and got the rest of the series. Although it is beautiful, I would not mind having this on my shelf. Yeah. <laughs> it is really and the whole series is just like pastel perfection. Yeah, I feel, I think I would need someone whose opinion I trust to, like, read the second one first and then tell me, like, oh, it's yeah. what, what you would want in the second book to pick up. Because I do agree. I, I think like the first moment where I was really like, oh, Ophelia was when, um, what's the, what's the aunt, Ber Bernadine? Ber Beryl. I kept calling her Berenstein. Yeah, I, I know the <laughs> name, but I <laughs> Baronild. Baronild? Baronild. Yeah, Baronild. Yes, that's she, it. When she was like, oh, forget about this, like, yada, yada, yada. And then Ophelia, like, threw the water into her face and was like, no, you <laughs> get with it. I was like, finally, after like, four pages of you just getting beat up. 
I I felt that was so frustrating because I wanted to root for her and like bad stuff just kept happening to her and then she would just be like (laughs) and it was so stressful it kind of reminded me in that sense of like some of the more toxic Korean dramas I would watch as a teen (laughs) think about like I don't know if you ever watched You're Beautiful um which I know has been adapted into a, a ton of different things um I forget what it's called in the other adaptations but like that this gave me kind of your beautiful vibes but the thing is is like if I were to watch your beautiful today I don't think I would like it because it's basically like a guy bullying a girl who is just super submissive the whole time oh yeah I did <laughs> yeah that's what stresses me out is that's what this book felt like is like this entire family taking advantage of this girl who's always been timid and is actually physically small and can't like fit mm-hmm. like either and then just like straight up abusing her like when when the sister comes in freya comes in and just like smacks her around and bruises her face yeah, and it when in that way it's like that's actually surprising yeah i did just and when she was going through all of that like mental like when um the aunt i immediately forgot her name was doing all that mental torture of making her like nauseous and giving her really bad headaches as she was forcing her to do chores and read out loud to her and stuff i was like i don't know how much more of this i can take of just reading this main character get beat on (laughs) and it was so stressful oh Oh my gosh wait can we talk about the grandmother oh wait first yeah we should talk about this (laughs) yes she I don't know if it's like patience or she was just like trying to accept this new life that she had. But I feel like at the beginning, it sounded like she had put up fights before with marriages to cousins yeah. she was with. Like she had some. She hints of it. Yeah, like her great uncle was like, You're not coming over here to fight another marriage. <laughs> like it sounded like she had some spark in her. And then we just saw none of it until the last 40 pages. That's actually a really good point because, yeah, at the beginning, like, we know that she's like declined all these marriages. We know that she, like, we saw her like give that one guy at the museum a bomb and like basically ruined his whole life. Yeah. Um, and so it just like, it just didn't connect with the character that we eventually see. Yeah, like they the made her book at the beginning. And yeah. Smart, but in a low key way where no one would suspect her, and then she just didn't act on that i mean i guess it makes sense she's in an unfamiliar world so maybe that can be part of it and she doesn't really have allies but i'm just like (laughs) that was the one thing and it i we waited so long yeah and totally got toxic where i was just like i'm i don't know if i can root for her interactions with any of these characters in the future after they just beat on her for so long i know um the grandmother really threw me off though um i was not expecting that so that was like a good twist when you found out she was actually the one who was poisoning who tried to poison i'm blanking on her name (laughs) who did that and like had all those like evil thoughts yeah and then that was like i told you not to trust anyone but my aunt what part of that did you understand i was like saying homie like the grandma was the only one who was nice to her you and your aunt were beating up on her this entire time and you wanted her to trust you and the aunt like i don't believe i was so thrown off by that especially because like right before then i felt like he was being nice and then he just like switched and he was like a jerk again yeah just She's like, so you weren't even surprised? And he's like, well, my grandma tried to kill me as a child. And then she was like, and you neglected to inform me of any of this. Yeah, I feel like that's like a 101 kind of piece of information to give them. Like, hey, my grandmother might try to murder you. FYI. <laughs> that, was, that was so stressful. And I feel like a lot of, even sh- even Ophelia notes it sometimes like in her narration that a lot of problems that arise for her are literally just because no one wants to communicate with her yeah and then I feel like as a reader that's especially frustrating when you know like with information there could still be conflict right but that she would be better prepared to deal with it when it comes up Mm -hmm. but now like your grandma tried to kill me and then he's like well yeah (laughs) duh duh um this is a good question about Archibald 
Um, I don't know if I was just so starved for like some sort of <laughs> positive um, interaction. So I was like all on Team Archibald. I'm like, yes, he's beautiful. He's <laughs> positive. <laughs> I was like, can someone just smile in this book? <laughs> <laughs> he's um, interesting to me. I feel like finding out more about him, and I, especially that scene where he's like, when Ophelia, Ophelia catches him courting like this much older woman, mm -hmm. she sees how clearly he just captures people's hearts without even putting any effort of kindness or anything into it. Like, he doesn't even yeah. harm, like, he just exists and people are enamored with him. I feel like that could be an interesting dynamic in the future with the two and of I them. And I want to know like why he started doing that or like is will they eventually give him someone who like he actually does want to be nice to? Is it going to be Ophelia? Probably. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> he reminds me of um Finnick actually from The Hunger Games mm. where Finnick was like, "Oh, I I you know, seduce people in the capital and I trade them secrets. Like I give them my time, they give me secrets. I feel like that's what Archibald is like too. And he's also that. fiercely protective of his sisters, the same way Finnick was fiercely protective of Annie. This probably doesn't make sense if you, if like people haven't read the Hunger Games, but like, that same vibe of being like the pretty boy who actually uses his looks and his charm to gain info on other people and slowly and systematically destroy them i'm like that's so interesting yeah i also thought like the magic of his family was really interesting like the fact that they were all like connected oh yeah yeah, yeah. i thought that was like yeah there were there was so much in this book that i just thought was so good and so that's why i'm yeah. so sad that i although having this conversation is actually making me like be like oh yeah that was actually kind of good yeah, I I kind of do want to check out the second one. I don't know if it's going to be anytime soon, but yeah. I just, I really liked the magic system and I liked one character that I feel like was introduced and we just didn't get enough time with was the knight, the little boy. Mm -hmm. who was, he was so the, creepy. Yeah, and he was the one who set up the massacre of the entire dragon family and he wanted to plot for like the death of the aunt's baby and all of this and just doing it behind the scenes and his his power is really cool and I feel like mm -hmm. I don't understand it that well yet and he's being set up to be like a very strong antagonist and I'm like where is he but yeah he was creepy <laughs> yeah I just think like random children popping up is always creepy <laughs> like just random children I'm like if you don't have if there's not a reason for you to be here and you're just a child <laughs> in this situation, I'm like, you're creepy. I feel that. Ooh. I think the sequel is better. I could see that. I could see, like, like potentially the sequel being, like, Ophelia really coming into her self and like actually like if that's what the second book is if like Ophelia like finally takes a stand for who she is um and if we start to actually see some sort of like I don't know positive interactions between her and anybody <laughs> I mean, literally anyone <laughs> um I think I'd, I'd be interested yeah, I, it seems like people who read book two were like, it's better. Oh, the knight's in it? Yeah. He's constantly, un consistently unhinged. I really like unhinged characters, though, because I think it makes the plot fun when they're just like, oh, where is he going to pop up next? I know. He was definitely like, he reminded me. I only watched a little bit of Game of Thrones, but I feel like there was a, like a creepy child in that, too. I don't know. I think there might have been a couple creepy children, actually. I don't know enough about Game of Thrones. It reminded me a bit of that. I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> he seems very attached to this lady who is not his mom. Yeah. The weird, like, mommy issues that came up in this book, I was like, oh. Because at first, the vibes, I don't know if you felt this too, but at first, the vibes that I felt weren't, like, a motherly attachment between the aunt and Thorn. I thought she was, like, into him. 
Yeah. And jealous of Ophelia marrying. That's what I thought at first before she described like losing her own children and then like Thorne being someone she took under her wing. Like that's when I understood that it was more of like a mother son relationship. But at the beginning, the way she, this son is, the way she was interacting with Ophelia and the way she would talk about Thorne, I was like, I know I'm not reading incest. <laughs> uh, that would be rough. <laughs> but then I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Although, is it so? Like, this is what I couldn't figure out because Beryl Ber- Bernadine, Beryl Dean, Beryl Burn, that lady, um, she, was, <laughs> she was impregnated by their family ghost. Yes, I was confused, <laughs> and I was. Or spirit, whatever. Yeah. I was like, is that, is this okay? I was like, is this possible? And also, I was just. I some concerns. I was really, that dynamic is, was also confusing because like Far- Farouk, is that the Lord Farouk? Um, yeah. Like his presence at the end, how like she's going to become his ward and stuff to stay safe. I was kind of like, so, so is he like a physical, you know, like the way that her family Ophelia's family goes is you have to like travel a long distance to meet her and she doesn't just like hang out and involve herself in the affairs whereas this lord seems to know everyone remember everyone and have strong influence in them and even takes lovers from his own family I I was like oh (laughs) yeah I didn't really understand that I will be honest is like the part of the magic system that I just like didn't really get like I didn't really understand the like family spirit part and like, yeah, just like how that how that translated into actual powers and the whole like God part, because it ends with like, oh, there's like, I don't get that line. There was like something again. Oh, yeah. It's coming. The fragment postscript. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was like, it's coming back to me. God was punished on that day. I never understood that God wasn't all powerful since then. I've never seen him again. I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> Am I dumb? I was like, I don't get it. And I, was like, I, I can't tell if this is like something to do with the magic system or if this is just meant to be like deep and profound, in which case I could see that. Yeah. I, like, I don't get it. It's just right over. Like the first fragment, I also, I was like, what? <laughs> I just started the book. But I think the the part that I was confused about was the importance of the of the family spiritual book. Yeah, that too. Uh, that came up and that was that's what her entire marriage hinged upon was her ability to pass on her reader skills so that they could read into the history of the book. And mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, where, where did the importance of this book come from? Or like, what is the book? And she yeah. like, is it the same book from the beginning? Or like the same type of book, you know what? Like at the beginning, when she's in the one of the lib, she's in the library, and she like goes down into like the tunnel section or like the basement. I don't know what it was called. Um, so she goes down, and then there's this like ancient book, and she's talked about how like she's tried to read it in the past, like with her gloves off, and she couldn't get anything from it. Um, it was like at the, literally the very beginning before she even met him. Um, it was like when she was with the grandfather. So there was like that whole scene. And so I was like, are they the same book or are they like like the similar book? I wasn't sure. Yeah, I feel like, oh, I can't remember what you're talking about now. Cause I remember her mentioning too, that like she, when the aunt was like, oh, we brought you here so you could read the book. And she was like, well, I tried to read my family spirit book and you can't. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what you're talking about now, but I just, I feel like a lot of questions were open in this book. Which yeah. makes me want to read the second one because I'm just confused <laughs> about it. But also, I want like a not a guarantee. Well, yeah, I want to guarantee that the characters that I was super interested in appear again. So, like Fox and Gale in particular, I want to know what happened to them because the last thing we yeah. see is Fox pretending to be a mechanic to keep the cops off of Ophelia's case, and then Gale healing Aunt Rosalind and then dipping. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, are they safe? Are we going to come in contact with them again? Because they, they, well, Fox doesn't, but Gail knows Ophelia's secret and like Ophelia knows hers. They formed a bond. So I'm just like, I yeah. want them to. They were my faves. So I hope they come back. Um, 
this is good to know. Okay. <laughs> it makes me more interested in book two. That's why I was like, I need someone else to read it first. And then I'm not smart enough where if it wasn't explained in book two, where I would get it. <laughs> um, I think I'm also just like so used to like, I mean, maybe, and this might just be like a personal problem. It is, it, it is a personal problem. But I'm so used to like, like fantasy, like Brandon Sanderson, where like he really takes you by the hand. He walks you through it. And he walks you through it constantly. He's it's like very much so like like he kind of treats you like a toddler when you're reading. Because he's like, okay, now remember, this metal does this, XYZ. Um, which is very helpful for me. And this book did not do that. Yeah. Um, which again is probably more on me than on the book. That's why, yeah, I read a lot of middle grade fantasy. I've been reading a lot of middle grade fantasy novels recently, so I'm used to it being like, hey, here's very very detailed explanations on everything that's happening and i'm like yeah <laughs> <laughs> um oh also i did you do the audiobook for this at all yes i did for the beginning part that's why it's rusty for me did you what did you think of the audiobook i i didn't I don't like the so some of the accents that the narrator did I feel like it's probably because it's translated from French so they're supposed to be kind of like Frenchy accents like oh the strong rolled R's and stuff but I don't know it was distracting to listen to it was so yeah that's how I felt and usually I love when the voice actor does like oh like goes all the way in and like does all different kinds of accents and voices and like I want to say that this voice actor was like actually really good. Like they did a really good job, but for some reason I found it really like just jarring and distracting. I think is a good word. It kind of reminded me of like an English dubbed anime. Yeah. <laughs> like the kinds of voices that were in the audiobook. I was just like, I feel like I am listening to a dub right now. Yeah. No, I feel that. I yeah, so then that's why I give up on the audiobook and I just return it to the library and then I just yeah. I just got the book because I was like, I'm going to read it. <laughs> I and needed I staying focused, so I stuck with the audiobook while I read. Oh, yeah, the, audio, yeah, the audiobook was too distracting for me, so then I was just like, okay. I need to uh, jump in quickly. Wait, let me put my bookmark back. Oh yeah, Aunt Rosalind. Um, I just want to talk about her. She's also one of my favorite characters. And I feel like she was the only person who continually stood up for Ophelia when nobody else would. And I feel like when when she had to pretend to be a servant and kind of give up on her pride to protect Ophelia, I was just like, yeah. Rosalind is that bee. <laughs> I love her. And, like, you don't expect to love her, I feel like, at the beginning. Like, when yeah, she's first introduced, I was like, she's going to annoy me this whole book. Yeah. She ended up being one of my faves. And it was Ophelia who annoyed me the whole book. So, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> yeah, that was the main thing. It's just, like, the the blank female protagonist is one of my least favorite tropes ever. I don't even know if it counts as a trope or if it's just a way yeah. that people tend to write female characters. I don't know. but. Like the female character is just passive and things just happen to her and then she just knows mm -hmm. what's happening to her or That's even like because i i would say like i've read some like fantasy female main characters who are pretty passive but like they still feel like whole characters like the one that i think of is like alina from shadow and bone who and i'm probably only thinking this because i'm currently rereading it um mm -hmm. but like in the first like chunk of the first book at least so this isn't like spoilery she is kind of like that where she is um she just kind of lets things happen to her but i also like you feel her working towards like being stronger and being independent and like i felt like that's what i lacked with ophelia in this book is that it just really felt like she was just being blown whichever way the wind blew yeah um or thrown whichever way the wind blew and not really sort of trying at all or not not trying but like I don't know it was just weird how her character was and especially like because of how like interesting I found her at the very beginning where I was like oh yeah I'm gonna really like her yeah and I was like what happened <laughs> what happened to you what happened? yeah and because I feel like after 
after she meets Fox, like she just does what Fox tells her to do and just like follows Fox. And then once she meets like when Bar- Baronil, like whenever Baronil tells her to do something, she just does it. And it's just like other people pulling her along and she's like, well, I guess. And then even if in her mind, she's like, no, this doesn't feel right. She still just does it. And then I feel like there wasn't even like small plotting in her mind to be like, this is how I'm going to get out of this situation if I hate it. Yeah. I really agree with um, what Rusty said where it just like, it wasn't fun to read because of that. Yeah. 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 The physical physical abuse part was really (laughs) not my cup of tea. Um, I don't remember if I even saw that in the content warning before picking this up. Um, but I feel like just the fact that it kept happening and then like no one said or did anything was what bothered me the most. Like, mm-hmm. no, not retribution, but there wasn't any that like no one, nothing happened to the people who did that. To, well, I guess Freya technically gets massacred, but not yeah, as a yeah. result of the abuse, but just because she was in the way of yeah other power dynamics at play so then I feel like everyone else who caused her harm is still just like yeah we're gonna keep doing it and then that's what stresses me out because I'm like is that gonna be book two also where she yeah I mean I will say that like it doesn't like cool like it doesn't make it seem like that use is okay like it shows it as being horrific um so I don't think it's like Bad, but yeah, like I definitely think that should be like, especially because it's YA, like maybe a content warning would be nice, but um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely pr- portrayed like it's bad. It's, and you should, it wasn't celebrated that she was being abused, but I just the continued. Yeah, it was a lot. It was kind of like how I felt. It's the reason why I stopped watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's because I was just like, this is not fun. Like everyone is just mean and mm-hmm. awful and like abusing each other. Like I don't I don't yeah. Yeah, people kept trying to put me on Game of Thrones and I was like, I just don't think that's for me. <laughs> Personally, mm-hmm. the things I've heard about it, I just feel like I am good elsewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this question is really cool. If you could have one of those powers, which would you pick? The mirrors thing is cool. The web feels weird. The web is weird. I would not want yeah. to have my thoughts and experiences with. My Never. <laughs> I think that just that would be horrifying. And I don't want to know what they're experiencing and seeing all the time either. I feel like it could be convenient at times. In that world. I feel like it also wasn't explained. Can you turn it off? I like, don't think so. I think they're always. Because like. I feel like they, like that guy would have, you know, at some point. Oh yeah, yeah. Archibald yeah. would have been like, oh yeah, I've I've paused it for right now. That's true. He did. He did tell her he was like, don't just be saying whatever you want to people with my symbol. Like, yeah. That's yeah. I that's creepy. I don't want my family all up in my business. <laughs> I think I, the mere thing is what I would pick out of everything that would just be fun it also yeah. I, there was this like old television show that used to be on i think it was an alice in wonderland adaptation i have like the vaguest recollection i think i was like a baby when this was on television. <laughs> but i just have this like strong memory of this girl who had a mirror in her bedroom and she could like travel into the mirror and i don't remember anything else i don't know where she went or like any of that but that has always stuck with me and so i loved that part of this book because it just reminded me of that i was I like yeah on that way. It. we only saw it like the only major time i feel like it was used was when she left and she ended up in the mirage party yeah i couldn't get back. it could have been used better more often more often yeah because then the the ending impact where she's like i'm the mirror visitor would have been like <laughs> if if more impactful scenes happened i feel like with the mirror visiting but yeah I feel like for me, the Mirage one is cool where you can create illusions. That was the, like, the reward system was really interesting, too. Like, how you could, like, give someone, um, like, one glasses. Those experiences. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was really fascinating. I also would have wanted more of that because I thought that was such a cool concept. I thought so, too. Yeah. And he was like, oh, the, the blue ones are 
when you can experience any of your dreams. And I was like, what? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That is, yeah, that the same classes were a really cool concept that you get paid in them. Mm -hmm. but super interesting. But then I, I was like, how do you afford food? And <laughs> things that you just get paid in same classes. But I do like that Ophelia, like, called it out as being I think you're being ripped off basically <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> they give you a day off as your pay <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a problem here so I did appreciate that um I also thought like the way that they did the um uh the little boy I forget his name all of a sudden the night like, yeah. the ability to like be like oh you're gonna forget this i thought that was cool yeah i think i, I would like that power i do a lot of embarrassing things <laughs> <laughs> people forget what that they meant yeah. like, like we haven't we haven't done this that is a good power and i feel like i could i actually really like the writing in that part of the book like when she forgets immediately afterwards and she feels frustrated she's like why do I feel like something really important just happened and it just mm -hmm. nothing I, agree. I was like, or like there was one part I think a little bit later on where like you don't see it happen as the reader but you see her like realize that he had done that oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And I was like that's that's cool yeah I feel like I'm slowly starting to like like this went from a two star and I think I think it's up to three just so like I'm talking now. Curious about where I'm at because I really did like the magic system, and I just didn't. Yeah. I didn't grow super attached to the characters, which is always a bummer. So I feel like yeah. it's, it's average for me right now. <laughs> I could see myself picking up the sequel eventually. Maybe not the audiobook though. <laughs> Maybe. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I wanted to discuss. Is this being adapted? I don't know. For some reason, I like have that in my head, but that I might be thinking of something else. Um, oh, you know what this kind of reminded me of? Um, in the sort of like, in how it let me down was, um, so I've read two books by Naomi Novik, uh, A Winter's Promise, which is one of my favorite books of all time. Oh, and no, then, this is oh no, wait, <laughs> what is the winter one from her? Um, why am I blanking on it? There's the one where it's like very wintry setting. It's like the Rumpelstiltskin retelling. That one's amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's her other one, Uprooted, that I just, Okay, yeah, Spinning Silver and then Uprooted. Uprooted was very, I felt like very similar in that I just didn't understand the romance. And it was just sort of like, it just happened. Um, and that was my biggest like frustration with that one also. But I also kind of feel like if you liked Uprooted, you might like A Winter's Promise. <laughs> because I know people love Uprooted. It just didn't work for me. I feel like uh -huh. I keep seeing nightmares. what I see those books hyped a lot, especially Spinning Silver. I see hyped a lot, which I still want to check out. But yeah, Spinning this Silver is great. <laughs> Uprooted, I didn't like, but I know people who love Uprooted so much more than Spinning Silver. So but that's what it, like when I was reading it, I was like, this reminds me of when I, the disappointment I felt when I read Uprooted. <laughs> yeah, I think because there's I, ugh, there was moments. There were moments that I felt like were written to be super impactful in the development of Thorne and Ophelia's relationship. Like I marked one of them where he's, they're talking about it and she's like, I don't want to marry you. This is a mistake. This is, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Like blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you deem me incapable of one day offering you a decent life. Would you permit me in turn to prove myself? And that was supposed to be like the Mr. Darcy moment where he's like, I can do this for you. Like, give me a chance, blah, blah, blah. But then I... <laughs> yeah. Well, my issue with that was that there was no build up to that moment. Like, yeah, we didn't see any sort of pining, and like, yeah, maybe he's not supposed to feel that. Maybe, maybe, like, was he actual? Like, was he telling the truth in that moment, or was he lying? Because I know that he 
you know, at the end, it's, like, revealed that he is also using her for her powers. So, like, that's, I wasn't 100% clear on that because I was, like, maybe he was still lying at that point. And then, like, in book two, that kind of develops more. Um, but if he wasn't lying, I was just, like, I don't. I don't think you guys had any interactions in which you should feel any emotions toward this girl. Yeah, that's exactly how I felt. Like up at that point, I was like, had you guys spoken besides like the on your fl- on your trip here? <laughs> Despite all the- other than all the times you threatened her. <laughs> <laughs> like I just, I don't know. I feel, I, now it makes me realize like the brooding love interest is difficult to do well. And I think reading more books that have a brooding love interest that I don't vibe with makes me appreciate the ones that I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like Kaz from Six of Crows. I was like, oh, okay. wait, how old are these characters? Is it ever- I couldn't figure out because he seemed old. Or like he was an accountant or not an accountant. He was a treasurer. <laughs> 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 and but like she was young right that's the feeling that i got because i feel like if it's a young adult she can't be older than like 20 yeah or i don't know i mean nikolai in not to not to continually bring up grisha but he's like 26 or 27 oh. um in king of scars which has always surprised me that that has just snuck by in the ya world um i mean it reads still like ya but um, she's not like pulling a Sarah J. Mass. <laughs> I don't know how old she is. I don't know if anyone ever said it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I mean, she's of marriageable age. Yeah, except I'm like in this fantasy world, that could be like 14. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're not wrong. I'm just gonna hope that that's not the case. Yeah, I. I feel like this. I feel like someone would have called that out before this book. Like this book has a lot of hype. Yeah, that's true. I, feel like I would hope. <laughs> or maybe everyone has just, like, not been able to figure it out, too, like us. Because I think, I don't feel like there's not even any reference to it. The only thing you get, you can kind of tell is that her brother, Hector, is younger than her and also seems mm-hmm. to be younger. True. Well, that's, part of me also wonders if it's, like, just because they just decided to put it in YA, like, when they translated it. Like, I don't know what this was shelled as in France, because, like, I think about um, Almond, which is a Korean book that was translated, and it was middle grade in Korea, and here it's, like, adult literary fiction. Sometimes I feel like they just kind of picked a genre. Maybe they were just like, oh, this doesn't fit in with our normal adult translated fiction, so we'll put it in YA, you know? That's true. I feel like I didn't get the feeling that they were teenagers in the book. Yeah. So, that, but I was thinking about that because I was like, are you like 30 and brooding? <laughs> 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 I don't know. I just, if it's like a 30 year old man and like a 20 year old girl and he's brooding, then I'm not as into it. Yeah, I feel so, that. So that's why for a second I was like, wait, how old is this man and how old is this girl? Ooh. I feel like a lot of this I would have been different. Oh. Yeah, I agree, actually, that normally you start seeing the softer side of the brooding love interest happen yeah. like, earlier. Or, like, even if... I don't want to use this example, <laughs> but uh, it's the only thing I can think of um, in the... What is it called? A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Where, like, you have Rysand, who is horrible, but um, I think she does a good job of, like, introducing him in book one and then, like, seeing his, like, actual character in book two. But I feel like she always had him be interesting, whereas I feel like my issue with Thorne is that I never really found him, like, very compelling, you know? Like, I never felt that, like, oh, he's brooding, but he's wounded or, like, I don't know. There's just something more that I cared about. He just seemed mean. Yeah, and bland. And bland. That's why at the end when they revealed him to be the puppeteer all along, like the aunt was looking to him for direction and he was the one pulling the strings. I was like, what? True, true. This man was a slice of white bread. 
I wonder if I reread it if I would like it more because I feel like you like you learn a lot of stuff about the characters by the end and I'm like maybe I would appreciate it more upon a reread or upon reading the second book looks like Emily saying lack of finding most frustrating book thorn in book two I can't we can't see the emojis is it like hard eye emojis yeah hard eye emojis side <laughs> eye emojis <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, I'm interested. <laughs> I'm not even, I, I'm not, I'm neither pro nor against fantasy or romance and fantasy. Like if it's there and it's good, I'm like, Ooh, and if it's not there, I'm like, oh, darn. Like I'm cool with it either way, but I feel like when it's there and I don't like it, I'm like, <sighs> like it's fr so frustrating. Oh no, it was the frustrated tear emojis. <laughs> Wait, so like it's worse? So bad? So it's worse or or like the pining was so good that you're like <laughs> this needs to be clarified, Emily. <laughs> I can't dive into book two excited for pining. <laughs> I'm frustrated to your emojis. In a good way. Okay. In a good way. In a good way. <laughs> <laughs> oh god am i really i like it when that happens so like the character yeah. that makes me that puts me onto someone's team i feel like that's the I'm best definitely, i agree i'm more intrigued now i think the second one's yellow too which is like one of my favorite pastel colors they just so, you know, like he's you know, pulled all the books that are out so far i'm just like yes i want this series it's so pretty yeah, it's really the art is actually amazing. I saw I saw the I think the second and third book are out, right? Because I'm pretty sure yeah. I saw a green one too. Yeah, and I was just like, so um, one day. But yeah, I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I wanted to discuss about this one. Were there any like? Any other key points you wanted to speak to? Oh, I guess the one thing that I'm excited to see how it plays out um, in the future is because we see from Gail that her whole family was murdered and they were once a prominent magical family. Mm -hmm. And now she lives in hiding to try to avoid getting killed. Like, I wonder how that's going to play out now that for the dragon family, they basically have all been killed off and there's only two of them left and they're in fierce competition to gain um lord farouk's love and trust and favor so i'm excited to see if they're gonna keep a strong position in the political hierarchy or if the murder of their family is going to cause them to fall into like disrepute and then they have to go yeah know, they're so powerful right now yeah I think that could be interesting to see. I agree. And I want to see more, like, Gail can't have been the only character who once came from a powerful magical family and, like, is no longer in power. I want to see if there's other people in hiding who can help Ophelia and be like, I also have this magical power and I'm going to jump yeah. to the scene. Oh, you know what I'm really excited for? It. Also, this <laughs> I'm really intrigued to see, like, her family's reaction because her family's all coming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to see your grandfather be pissed. I loved her relationship with her. Wait, was it her grandpa or her great um, her someone? It was it was an elderly man. Yeah, an elderly like the, <laughs> the protective elderly man in her life. I just I always like that dynamic in books when you have like the grandfatherly figure. Yeah. <laughs> who taught you everything you know and is now like you let me know if anyone's causing you trouble and they jump in. Like, that's my favorite dynamic. I, I know there's, like, some literary term for it in the hero's journey. Like, the elderly, yeah. the elderly figure who, like, the oh, double I'm really worried he's going to die now because I feel like those figures always die. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, all the Star Wars films. Like, there's always that character in the 
in the hero's journey and i can't remember who it is. although i don't know if that's going to be the same for her because he technically wasn't around for her true true so, true well hopefully that means he doesn't die <laughs> <laughs> it'd be funny if we just guessed that yeah we're just like he's gonna die and then the second book is like <laughs> Yeah, I think that's, those are the main things. Um, the character development and then the magic system, I feel like were the two big standouts for me on opposite ends of the spectrum. Same. Yeah. Good luck, Emily, if you have, oh no, I thought you said you had a final. Just kidding, I totally misread your yeah. <laughs> Okay, Fox and Gail are definitely in book two. Okay, cool, I'm kind of sold now. New that Gail. <laughs> Um, I'm excited to discuss our um, next book, though. Oh, yes. Wondersmith. Wondersmith and Nevermore. Yes. That middle grade books, I just feel like, are so much fun. Most largely because I don't get confused by it. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a learning hurdle for me. <laughs> like, Winter's yeah. Bone, and the Bone Witch, I was like, there's a learning hurdle for me. <laughs> <laughs> with barriers. Um, yeah, I kind of feel like Bone Witch and this had like that kind of in common where the first book was a, a lot, lot of stuff. like setting up. Yes. Yeah. But then I do now that we talked about it, I do feel like the second book for this series could be promising because we saw her start to come out of her shell. I agree. Tia, she was like from the beginning so then I kind of already was like all right <laughs> well, okay, yeah, she was I don't know on and like off for most of the book and then finally on for the end so then I'm <laughs> I'm hoping to see more of that same so I'm glad <laughs> same thank you for joining us I yeah. also talking through it I think helped me <laughs> same I how like I'm really wasn't really sure how I felt until like this <laughs> yeah i think i think it's a solid three star for me yeah i enjoy I, it. certain people i might specifically recommend it to if i kind of know their tastes but nothing i would be like you must read now <laughs> change my life um but yeah if any of you are um, interested if you're not in the magical girl society yet you should join Find us over on Discord. Yes. Um, we talk some anime and um, books, just fun things in general. Um, but our next live is going to be a discussion of both Nevermore Book One and uh, the second book, Wondersmith, which I'm so excited for. Ugh. And if you wanted to join Magical Girl Society, the anime that we're watching for this month is Little Witch Academia. And we're going to have a watch party for that at the end of the month. So that's going to be really fun to join. If you're interested in magical girls doing magical things and being cute, that's a good one to check out. Um, I will leave all the links to everything in the description of this video later when it goes, when it's published on my channel. So then you guys can join. Um, we have Discord, we have Twitter, and we have Instagram. So if you don't have all of those platforms, but just one of them, we are on everything. We make a nonsense there. So no fear. If you're like, I don't have Discord, no worries. We're on Twitter and Insta. If you don't have those, we're on Discord. <laughs> so you can find us in many places. Yeah. So thank you all for joining. Thanks. So Thanks for hosting. Thank you. And we'll see you guys later. Bye.